Welcome, I'm Ben, and today we're going to be talking about the crypto market in April. What new coins are going to be popping off this month, why that might be the case, and who you should be looking to in the crypto space to be taking hints of what's about to come. And what data do we even have to suggest that? If you want to get clued up about all those things, then I suggest you stay around till the end. It just makes sense, really. The market is looking good. And so far, I don't need to apologize for my previous price predictions. My general sentiment was, we've had the lull, we've had the dip, if there was one, and now we're gonna see further upside. What data is there to support this? Well, when we're looking on Glassnode, we can see that the amount of Bitcoin shorts that have been liquidated in the past week or so, has been absolutely tremendous, totaling a value of almost half a billion dollars. And with these shorts liquidated, you can be damn sure that they won't be putting them back there anytime soon. And although Bitcoin is likely to see a massive increase in April to maybe over 75,000 US dollars, the altcoins, they're gearing up for even bigger gains. But who am I looking at? There's three this month that I can expect to see massive potential. I will mention XRP. The only reason I'm not including this is because it might be slightly irresponsible of me. So I don't want to include something that has pumped 100% in the last week, although it might go to, say, $3 by the end of April. I believe that's possible. It's not in my list of three because I know that crypto space is very volatile and, you know, someone could see this video, get excited, put a grand into XRP and it could drop down to 70 cents tomorrow and they could be very annoyed that they've lost 40% of their capital, sell it, and then not wait a week, miss the gains on the way back up and be very annoyed with themselves. So... That's why. My three, number one, ADA. I think ADA will increase in price in April because of the Alonso hard fork. We're slowly approaching the period where we have this smart contract capability. And if I'm going to be honest, that's what all the hype around Cardano was originally about. Yes, there's loads of other stuff that they do, but really, we're looking at Gogan smart contracts and smashing the crap out of it. With the fast approach of smart contracts, I think we can expect to see a massive increase in the Cardano ADA price to represent a fair proportion of the market cap for a competitor of the Ethereum ecosystem. Number two, Litecoin. As well as having the Cardano Velvet Fork, the Mimble Wimble upgrades, which improve privacy and security, Litecoin is also the test net for Bitcoin. So we've got to bear in mind anything in the future, such as the Lightning Network, will probably be implemented on the Litecoin network first in order to test it out and make sure there aren't going to be any issues. With the Mimble Wimble upgrade, Litecoin now has increased security and privacy elements but a lot of other coins don't have and it has just recently been green-lighted that you can pay with Litecoin through PayPal. Number three, Ethereum. Nice and easy, I'm picking all the top coins. Like to be safe. So Ethereum's been slowly moving between 1600 and 2000 US dollars. Hasn't really done much in the past couple of months. Although 25% volatility is quite a lot of normal asset classes, but in cryptocurrency, that's a slightly different story. Ethereum is linking generations. What I mean by that, it's got the old into it, it's got the young into it. We can see this by the fact that it's the most searched on YouTube out of Bitcoin and Ethereum and the different figures that promote it. So one example is, and slight caveat, what I'm gonna be doing when I introduce new people onto this channel, I will actually explain who they are. I now realize that you know new people probably have no idea who these people I'm talking about are. So maybe a brief explanation every once in a while would be good. So KSI, otherwise known as JJ Olatunje or Baba Tunde or Fat Neek to his friends. KSI is a British artist YouTuber, entrepreneur, funny man, not funny man, and side man. Posted on Twitter, Ethereum. Now, it's not the first one of those lot to get into it. Because I know Calix was saying on the Fellas podcast that he got into Ethereum at $9 back in 2017. He held it till it was almost a million dollars worth and then let it drop until whenever it was that he either sold it or, you know, just, just held it. KSI has over 15 million subscribers and has a lot of weight, a lot of clout, a lot of power in the social space today. And for the older generation, 
billionaires like Mark Cuban are showing support to DeFi and NFTs. We can see in a recent video from Binance, Mark Cuban heavily supporting the Ethereum ecosystem and saying that he's taken punts on some of these smaller altcoins. He can't say which because he doesn't want to pump and dump based on his portfolio, but at the same time, you can appreciate that he's trying to get his hands dirty and really understand these assets. He's bought NFTs, he's using DeFi protocols, really trying to get a grip on what's going on in the space and how this can be valuable in the future. Now, I know Mark used to work with distributed ledgers and databases, which is quite similar. So he's got that technical understanding. For those of you that don't know Mark Cuban, one of the hosts of the show Shark Tank. He's a billionaire, having worked with lots of entrepreneurs, writing many award-selling books, and also is the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. So with increased search, increased attention by massive public figures of different generations, we can see ETH is probably do a bit of a pump. And with Elon tweeting stuff, to make it so, we'll probably see it pretty soon. I don't know why he always clowns around like this. It's funny, it might be irresponsible. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's not, everyone's got free will. So. And we can tell when this is becoming more mainstream, the opportunity is probably ending. And I keep seeing more things from the BBC talking about Chinese Bitcoin farms, the environmental impact, questions of moral ambiguity and stuff like that. I think mainstream adoption is coming. I think there will be a narrative change. As Kevin O'Leary mentioned in an interview with Kathy Wood and some other people. I'm a creation, but you cannot tell the location of creation. And if in fact you don't want to own China coin, or as now it's being called blood coin, which sounds a lot like blood diamonds, you're going to have to prove the provenance of where your coin was born, so to speak. And that means virgin coin, I think over time, will take a premium over widely distributed or coins that you don't know the provenance, including ones held in ETFs. It could be a challenge. Some Bitcoins will be tainted coin and some won't. And this will depend upon how they're acquired, whether it's through clean energy, or fossil fuels. You'll be able to tell that by the addresses where they're from. If these addresses have validation of the means of production, then that's absolutely great. And you can be certain that the Bitcoin you receive is mined sustainably with care for the environment. Little caveat, that's assuming that the Chinese government don't lie or the Chinese businesses don't lie and we can prove that, although we probably can't because of like the levels of transparency and visibility into those sort of companies. It's, it's just not there. So yeah, April, green candles. Let's do this. I'll catch you soon.